Upside's Brit Awards is in no doubt where the current Prime Minister stands. That claim has been firmly rejected by Mr Johnson's allies. Well, I think his comments are wholly inaccurate, wholly inappropriate. I've known the Prime Minister for a significant period of time, even before I became Home Secretary. He is absolutely not a racist. Well, joining me now is Nels Abbey, who is author of Think Like a White Man, a satire on being black in the corporate world, and Cindy Yu, who is broadcast editor of The Spectator. Thanks to both of you for coming in. Nels, let me start with you. Do you think that what the government announced today will turn the clock back? It's a good question. I don't, no, I do not. I don't think so. I think that we'll still be reliant on... Um, on labour from outside of the, from labour from far and wide across the entire world. If I, if, just let me just give an example of where we are as a nation right now. If I, 2014, I was lucky enough to have my first child and my only child, mm -hmm. as my daughter. And the two things that went through my mind when I was actually in the actual delivery room was number one, I am so happy that I'm not on the side of the deal where my wife is right now. Mm -hmm. And number two, it was almost like watching a, um, a Formula One pit stop of almost people from different parts of the world around my wealth or around my wife, putting the epidural in her, helping her out to help her deliver my daughter. My daughter was delivered by so many different people from so many parts from of all the world. world. From all over the world. And I thought that many people within our society often don't realize the actual contribution that people from around the world are actually contributing to this actual, are giving to this nation and making it what it is today and making it a greater place. So is the problem that we've become a nation of immigrants by default but not by design? That these kind of numbers have crept up on people but never fully explained? I don't accept that we were never anything but a nation of immigrants. I think that we, we've always had immigration coming and going. I think we've also been a, a, a nation that's always been going way beyond our boundaries, mm. too, way beyond our borders. I'm from a place called, my parents, or I'm originally from a place called Nigeria and Ghana. Those mm. two places were places that were created by Britain. Mm. Nigeria, for example, just a place, a group of places that were amalgamated by Britain for the very purpose of Britain's commercial interests. And as a result of that, people like myself are here today. Cynthia, should we celebrate the fact that this country is now such an amalgam of so many different people? Like all of us. I mean, I, I was born in Germany, you were born in China, you were born to Nigerian parents. So yeah, absolutely. We are modern it's... Britain. Here we are, a troika of modern Britain. Yes, absolutely. And I think we often forget how diverse we are and how exceptionally diverse we are when it comes to the global stage. You know, as you say, I was born in China. In China, 99% of people look like me. They are Han Chinese, mm. right? So there's no diversity there and there's no chat of racism because there's no minority. There's no vocal minority to say, um, at least to say, you know, you are being racist. And of course, in recent and yes, that's changed a little bit now. But in this country, racism is such a topic because we have such a vocal minority, we have such a vibrant minority community that we can say, actually, this isn't good enough. But the problem is the language, isn't it? I mean, when Theresa May says, if you're a citizen of the world, mm. you're a citizen of nowhere, that is a deeply charged phrase to many people and deeply offensive, frankly. I think, I mean, I don't agree with her on that. I'm very cosmopolitan in my outlook on, I'm, I would say that I'm very liberal on this perspective. I would love to go traveling around the world. Mm. I would love to live in different places. But what she's tapping into is a very conservative, small c conservative way of looking at life, which is not necessarily offensive. It's just community based. You know, mm. community is based on people you know, people you share history with, a religion with, a language with. And that's understandable, I think. But, but, you know, we're talking about numbers here, and we're talking about economics, but, you know, depending on who comes in or who doesn't come in in the next few years, it will, this will fundamentally change the tone and the nature of our country, won't it? It has the, it could potentially do so, but the reality of the matter is that we are moving into the unknown. We, the reality is that we just actually don't know. In a good way or a bad way? In both ways, really and truly. It feels like much of Brexit and everything else has actually been one of the biggest gambles known to mankind in terms of a, an economy the size of ours, for example. And the actual, because I think that our culture as a society, what we are right now, and the direction we've been moving in over the last 20, 30 years, I was born in the 80s. I know how boring the 80s were compared to, say, where we are right now. <laughs> and, um, and I think Britain has become a lot more exciting, a lot more fun, diverse and a beautiful place. And I think that's something we should be happy, we should celebrate. But I can understand, to a certain degree, why there is some apprehensions about it. I can understand where it's coming from. And I think it's actually coming not from, I don't think it's legitimate, I can understand it. And I think it's coming from actually politicians who are often shifting the blame for things that, um, that they, shifting the blame onto immigrants for things that they're to blame for. And will that get worse or will it get better, do you think? It will cons persistently get worse as things go wrong. As things go, look, we, we, we up boom and bust economies, as things go wrong, mm. the scapegoat has always been the minority, has always been the immigrant, has always been the person, has always been the cheapest person to scapegoat when things go wrong. Cynthia, so should there have been something today in the government's new policy that says, you know, we're going to change the numbers mm. and we're going to change the criteria, but we welcome all of you 
who've come here. I mean, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear the love in that message, I... frankly. And there are a lot of people here who have come from outside, 14.5% of the population. You know, I actually disagree with that because I think, well, you know, what is a global Britain visa, right? That mm. is a welcoming message. Um, so, I mean, that is one of the Shouldn't things that... Shouldn't it be that... spelt out, though? Well, it is. I mean, it is spelled out. The immigration, the points-based system today has already been spelled out quite a lot. And if you look at it for non-EU migrants, so non-EU nationals, it's actually become more liberal, not less liberal. What was, that's what that's was, a theory. What was, no, no, but what was the salary threshold has been moved from 30,000 down to 25,000. Mm. What counts as skilled labour has moved down from degree level to A level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is a liberalisation of our immigration system the for non-EU nationals. The salary threshold, as it would happen, when we're thinking of England, we think of the people who think are great about Britain, for example, William Shakespeare in today's day and age wouldn't have made it to the tally threshold. The average writer earns about £11,000 a year in the society. Mm. And trust me, that takes a high level of skill in actually No, absolutely. And that's why the government has exemptions for people in the arts world, for people in the music world, who are not in that threshold just yet. And that is spelled out today but as well. But don't you want young people to come here and stay here, young people who don't earn that kind of money, because they then, you know, they will buy into, you know, you know the British dream, if there is yes. such a thing, and stay and become stakeholders in the society. Yes, absolutely. And that's that's why, you know, the degree level is there, the A-level skills um, definition is there. But also, you know, the th salary threshold is lowered for scientists, um, for other high skill mi migrants, you know, from 25,000 to okay. something closer to 20,000. Quickly. Yeah. yeah, I just think that, again, the, 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 the way in which we're defining skills or skills within this actual debate or so is, is flagrantly offensive. Sure. And also, too, what's often dismissed as unskilled labour are actually critical to our economy and our society. They help make it what it is okay. today. We've run out, sadly. Uh, Nels, Abby, Cindy, you, thanks very much indeed.